Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being with me again. Today I have a special episode, an episode entitled, What are the best ways to manage stress? And this is not something I can answer on my own. So I have a special guest today, an expert in stress management from Frankfurt in Germany, Stephanie Schaffner. So welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Mike. Nice to be here. It's very nice to speak to you. We've connected, obviously, on LinkedIn, and I've been looking at some of your posts, and they've been very interesting, and, and you've obviously reacted to some of my posts as well. So it's great to have a real conversation and um, go from this sort of online messaging and, and contact to a real uh, live conversation around your area of expertise. Just to give it a structure, I've formulated some questions which you're aware of. So we'll run through these, and during these questions, you'll have the opportunity to talk about obviously yourself, anything you're comfortable sharing, and your area of expertise, which is obviously stress management. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing your responses. So I'll get started now with the uh, first question. Number yes. one, what is your story? Oh, this is really, really a great quest question. I um, worked many years in business as a sales manager in the software area. And for international software companies um, and international companies such as Lufthansa, for example, and um, as a former head of new business, um, I was very stressed up. And I saw many colleagues of me suffering from permanent stress and running into burnout in, mm. in these years. And um, I was totally overwhelmed and had a real uh, stressed uh, timeline. And I had to raise up my two kids uh, by myself as a single mom and a full-time uh, job. Um, and uh, as a department leader of new business, it was very stressful stressful times there mm. and um, I decided uh, I had to had to give my 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 life and my my business something more meaningful mm. and um, I was in one situation years years ago and woke up at a at a city and uh, didn't know in which city I was oh wow and this was one uh, one point of of uh, a point of uh, um, looking back for my decision to to um, leave the corporate world and um, run my education for stress management uh, trainer and coach for burnout prevention mm. and uh, give my uh, business more meaning and um, help other people and in Germany we have this education mm. uh, from the government and um, you run through this education um, month and a year with a, theore with a theoretical part. Mm -hmm. And um, then after that, you have to have to do practical parts as well. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, uh, that was the point in, on this conference with, in Düsseldorf. It was in Düsseldorf. And um, there I decided I have to leave the corporate world and change my, change my life and my career. I understand that. I, and I can sympathize with that. I went through a similar experience. The corporate world does not give you a lot of flexibility. And I can understand your desire to leave that kind of uh, the pressure and the stress yeah. of, of, of the, the routine and the targets. And many of us have been there and completely understand your desire to, to be uh, more independent. What, uh, wh when was the point uh, in time? So how many years ago was it you started your own, your own business? Uh, I founded my business um, in the last year, in uh, November 2019, okay. wow. but I had to prepare it uh, uh, one year ago because in Germany we have also, like the UK, uh, difficult tax offices and yes. uh, such such things. And the founding was um, November 2019, the official founding. Okay. You've, you've shared your story. And I'm, my understanding is, and I'll, I'll just, correct me if I'm wrong, you didn't start out to be your own business person. So would you say that you were... Uh, 
it's just the circumstance and then wanting more meaning in life that led you to be an entrepreneur rather than because some of these uh, some children now uh, and I say children teenagers they, they're you know, very confident that that's what they're going to be they're going to be an entrepreneur going to do this this and this that wasn't my path and it didn't sound like it was your path how do you feel about being in this uh, more independent and some would say riskier zone now as, a, as an entrepreneur how do you feel about that um, it's it's uh, riskier, but it's um, it's uh, the best way I I could choose. It's um, for the family life. I I choose my own appointments, and um, I can I can um, get the children out of the house in the morning and then start my appointments and and I can work on the weekends if I want <laughs> <laughs> and. You can. It's a. It's a fulfillment life. It's yes. a fulfilled life, and uh, I like the way of of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Um, if a client that you're working with now in your new life as an entrepreneur was to describe you, wh which three adjectives would they would they use to describe you? Um, professional. Very professional yeah. and um, uh, trustful. And yeah. um, yes, I'm. Um, I have the the business the business background, yes. and this is. I think that this is a is a, a great uh, point, and um, I know what what um, what my clients are struggling with in the corporate world and in the in this um, business situation and and that's the that's one of my usps i think it's um authenticity yes no very good um uh, tell us more about your business now obviously you're an expert in stress management what courses do you have available what you know what training do you do how, how can businesses benefit yeah, I'm focused on working in the B2B um, business. Yeah. Um, I work with companies, uh, leaders and team leaders, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs on site in workshops. And um, we, uh, we work, um, I teach them strategies to manage stress in a, stress in a healthy way. And um, or one of the one of the things I do is um, to create a, a healthy work environment in companies. Yeah. And I work international. That's um, I don't just work in in the Dach area. Mm. I work international and on site or also in the COVID nineteen situation um, online. Okay. And do you prefer? Uh, or does the majority of your work come from? companies or is it high high level individuals which which is so if somebody was watching this and they said well can stephanie help us in this situation which where does your work come from um i work also with the companies on site and yeah. um in this situation often the need um, um is there that one person wants to go deeper yes. and then i work I work face-to-face -face, um, coachings, but I'm uh, I'm focused on the on the company work. Yes. But it's also um, possible to to book face-to-face um, -face meetings, face-to-face -face coachings, and um, on-site on the company face-to-face -face, yes. or um, via Zoom. It's also e possible. Excellent, excellent. And even before, obviously, the the COVID nineteen pandemic, there was a always a lot of stress particularly, and I know the B2B environment very well, there's always a lot of stress around targets, around new business especially. Uh, have you seen a greater demand for your services and your specialist expertise now? I would imagine so. Have you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, um, besides the COVID-19 situation, um, uh, there was a, a higher need of, of uh, burnout and stress management coaching because the companies are changing. Yeah. They're getting more mindful and they're getting more focused on their employees and they recognize that they lose, um, they lose um, money. And um, I think they are aware of these uh, topics 
more than in the past and even in the in the foreign countries in the in the countries besides germany in mm. in the us in canada in the uk and yeah. in all these um, areas um, they are more um, mindful and more more aware of these um, of these uh, burnout situation i think you're 100 percent right because it used to be the approach was oh, our employees are complaining about welfare about uh, work life balance just give them more money it, that used to be that used to be the solution would be you know try and increase the money and everybody is driven by money but everybody is not driven by money you reach a stage where you realize that there will always be perhaps more people people with more money than you and that you need to look at your life the balance your children uh, uh spending time with your extended family as well and just having quality time and quality time is more important than you know more money in the bank and feeling very un unhealthy and ill because of your stress so i think this is a a great time for, for you and your business as employee well-being becomes something that's high on the agenda because people realize, well, nobody really cares about, uh, after, after a certain level, people don't care about more money. They don't care about um, more financial incentives. They want something else. They want flexible working. They want um, support for childcare. They, they, you know, there, there are a, a whole range of, of benefits and uh, welfare needs that are not related to money and uh, old fashioned companies are, are being left behind now because of that. And we're seeing this more and more in, in business situations. Uh, speaking of business, how, what was the, the best piece of advice you, you've ever been given? And if you don't mind sharing, who is it from? Or it could, it could be just a, a quote that you heard. It, it, it was my, uh, my business coach, my okay. um, founder coach, and it's a coach from the US. And um, we are in Europe uh, um, thinking small. And um, in, in the US, they are thinking big and yes. nothing is impossible. And, mm. and it, it was just an advice, go forward every single step and um, you will succeed. Every little step you take every every day is a, is a success and per, even if it's a small step yes. it's a success and go forward and make your make your thing and that's that's was a great advice for my for my coach that no that is good advice very good advice do you and it touches on something that uh, perhaps you i don't know if you this might be part of your work there's a this theory uh, that was developed around the imposter syndrome. So sometimes people feel stressed because they might believe, who am I to be this person that has these million euro contracts or these you know, million dollar deal? Who am I? I'm just a regular person or I'm just a normal person like the other person in the street. Who am I? So uh, w one thing that I've uh, uh, encountered from people I've worked with, they'll say to me, well, you know, I didn't think I would be in this position uh, now and it's a good position and it's positive but they don't necessarily know how to behave they weren't engineered for that role and that so there must be a lot of stress for high level executives around the idea of can they really do what they're being paid to do now is that something that comes into your work um yeah, very brilliant uh, people have the imposter syndrome. Uh, we know uh, persons in public uh, like stars from the cinema and, and mm -hmm. something like that talking about this thing. And uh, even C-level leaders um, mm -hmm. um, have such mind um, uh, thoughts and uh, it's a great issue. I think uh, such brilliant persons uh, have uh, such negative thoughts and um, um, it's a big thing from our big topic in our um, in our generation and um, we have to overcome these these negative thoughts and um, to work on our mindset and if we change the the um, thing how we uh, look at the things is a great thing in stress management a great thing is uh, cognitive uh, and thought and um, how to deal with our mind and have positive thoughts and that's a great point in the stress management and mm.
that we have to work the most. Mm. No, I understand. If you were, if you were to live your life again, uh, what would you do differently? And that can be, you can answer that just related to business or you can answer that in some other way if you want. It's up to you. It's open. I think um, with the knowledge of now, I would not step into the corporate world. I would um, uh, found it my, have founded my own business after my education and um, I would not uh, step into all these ducks uh, concerns and, and um, big players and um, have founded my own business uh, right after my education and that's, live, that's for, yeah, no, that's, live that, happily after. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very interesting and I understand why you say that and um, it is a thought that's crossed my mind also. But then you as a, a business owner now are one of the things you, you, know, you were saying earlier, you are very professional, people trust you, a lot of that has to do with the business background. Yes. You, you do know how to do things. You know how to do things in multinational co corporations and you know how to streamline processes and yeah. make them more efficient and with a, 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 a focus on well-being. So a lot of that, although I understand completely what you said, a lot of that has come from your background. Yeah. It's made you a better business owner because if you, maybe if you went straight into business, you don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know the processes. You don't know the workflows. You have to work. You know, find out as you go along. Uh, and I think because um, I, I've, you know, I've followed a similar route. I've worked with large companies, and then I started my own company. Um, so, so I, I understand that completely. Uh, do you, if you were, do you work at always alone, or do you work sometimes with colleagues and associates, or how, how does it? Does, is there some flexibility there? I've got my own little team and mm. I um, often work in corporations uh, with uh, coaches. Um, we have a leadership um, program and there I, there I work with a, a coaches company called Level Up Professionals. Yeah. And there are also business coaches and, um, and uh, something like that. And sometimes we work in, in, in a corporation in this package for example. Okay. And there's one thing I, I made a note of earlier, and I should have mentioned this to you. Can you tell me a, a bit about the uh, Thrive Global program? Because I know that you're, uh, you've contributed to that. Uh, so you could tell, tell me some more about that, please. Yes, Thrive Global is founded by Ariana Huffington. We all know Ariana Huffington from mm. uh, Huffington Post. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a community um, which... Uh, wanted to uh, delete the burnout syndrome in the yes. world and um, I'm contributing out of all that. That's wonderful. And through that, are you meeting new people who are doing a sim similar work in other countries and globally? Yeah, globally. Um, you, meet, you meet people. Um, uh, I met a beautiful lady from, from um, Israel and um, uh, you meet people around the world and um, who are also working with the stress management and mm. mindfulness and um, who have the, 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 the goal to uh, delete this burnout generation in the, in the corporate world. Mm. And um, yeah. Okay. And in your, uh, in your opinion, what will change in your sector stress management over the next three years i think um the topic will uh, get more more awareness in public because everybody knows one person who had suffered on under burn, uh, burnout or on under uh, permanent stress and nobody wants to be weak weak mm. and uh, and uh, tell uh, another person, I need help, I'm uh, totally stressed up or something like that. Um, I think it's time for a leadership change and the leaders in, co in the corporate world and in, in, in their entrepreneur life and uh, something like that have to change their mindset and have, I think there, there will be a big change in the next three years. I think we will see um, more Gen C 
leaders who are um, yeah. focused on their life balance and focus on their health and the well-being and um, this will this will change a lot yeah okay um, during your I, I suppose we should we can look at your whole career or you can look at your, your time as a business owner what has been your biggest challenge I think the biggest challenge was the the step um, it was the 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 best step ever, mm. but the step from the corporate world to the entrepreneurship, yes. and this uh, you have to you are totally lost. In in my point of view, I was totally lost. Mm. How to start? What to do? What are the steps um, to to go in this in mm. this independent life and to to uh, earn your own money yes. as a as a as a, a business owner and mm. i think this was the biggest challenge and it was um the best the best point of this all okay yeah and a follow-up question how how did you overcome that challenge i've got a really really cool uh, business strategy coach from the us catherine b roy by the way right and um this helped me a lot yeah. she's a brilliant has a brilliant expertise and um she's focused on on um, this business um side and that was perfect she okay, helped good. me a lot brilliant i will um when we uh, finish this interview, I'll just ask you for her details and I can put it in the notes yeah. in the description underneath the video. No problem. Okay, who is your uh, entrepreneurial hero and why? <laughs> I think it's Tony Robbins. <laughs> okay. Because he made a career in, in over 25, 30 years. Um, this um, incomparable. Yes. Yeah. Because of his career or because of, I don't want to lead you, but obviously I'm aware of him. I've reviewed one of his books on my channel. Uh, because of his career or anything else? Have you been to see him it's, live, I think for example? His mindset, his positive mindset and, yeah. and, the, and uh, this message behind his career, this um, you can, you can um, do anything you want and mm. uh, just focus on the positive and it will all come to another and um, yeah. Yeah, mindset is hugely important. And I think yeah. that uh, in the past, people perhaps haven't given uh, enough attention to mindset. And I think, you, you know, what you were saying in terms of making the transition from the corporate world, where you have obviously situations that you might not like, political situations or deadlines or workload, um, but you do have a structure there you know where you're supposed to be and then you, and you know that you'll be paid this amount of money. So you have that and you can use that against your, you know, your outgoings uh, to the independent life or the, the business owner where there's a blank sheet of paper and one week there might be lots on the paper. The next week, this is hypothetical, obviously, there might be nothing on the paper or what you thought was on the paper has been removed. The projects that you thought were starting or the clients that you thought were starting are no longer going ahead. And I think, and it's, it's good that you, you know, obviously you mentioned your business coach. One of the challenges that we, we face as business owners is to keep uh, almost, uh, well, keep a calm head and it's analogous to the game of poker, to keep a poker face when things are good and when things are bad we almost must outwardly look the same. It's as if, you know, everything is, is, is calm and everything is cool. And in, inwardly, we're thinking, oh my gosh, what's going to happen now? Or this, you know, or, or even I've got too much work. I've got to deliver all of this by next Monday. And, you know, I don't have time. I don't have resource. So yeah, it's a very different world. And I will say from, from my perspective, it's not, it's not a world for everyone. You know, you see some people, who glamorize the, the entrepreneur life or the business owner life and they hustle, hustle, grind, grind, work, you know, which is wrong because obviously they're going to have problems with stress. But I, I think that it's, uh, uh, from my perspective, I think only a small percentage of people should do that because it requires uh, a, a tremendous work ethic, professionalism, dedication, uh, the ability to, to keep going when 
you're facing challenges and then obviously the ability to not get carried away when you're face when you're experiencing successes so yeah that's uh, you know it's it's very um it's very different to the the corporate world but as i agree with you 100% much better much better uh, in that you have uh, control over your life now i know uh that you've got obviously a website so can you tell everybody who's watching where they can find you and and find more, find out more about your services or your social links please yeah of course um, www.destressmanagerin.com is my website, but you can almost find LinkedIn. This is my main platform on Instagram and on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> right. And because we're on YouTube, I know you've got a YouTube channel, uh, so I will link to that as well. But this is, bit, from my perspective, I can only speak for myself, Stephanie, this has been a wonderful chat. Thank you very much for uh, agreeing to be uh, interviewed today and being on the YouTube channel. I know that my viewers appreciate all of these topics related to business. And, uh, you know, it's been great to, to speak to you and to be able to uh, record this and upload to, to, to YouTube. So thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure, Mike. Thank you for having me here. No, it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you very much for your time. I thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.